Hey, what's the posture looking like there? It's like they're taking it. Hey guys, we uh, we have a good friend of ours with us today, Brent, and he's come to hang out with the whole team. All of us here at GLT, we've got myself, Ian Highfield, and Eric Zeigel. And uh, he's really just come to experience what it's like working with all of us, doing what we love to do. So I'm going to teach him uh, some concepts of how to practice. I'm going to look at his mechanics as well. And uh, Ian's going to go into the psychology behind his uh, pre-shot routine and his whole shot uh, focus. So here it is. Rather than the typical traditional, just put your swing on video and then let's watch you hit the same club for 30 minutes and then let's unload, you know, reels and reels of information off at you. It's not helpful. So, although a lot would call it a test, you're going to play some games and that's it. Okay. Just for simplicity today to get going and to understand the concept more, it's going to be a simple tip if you thought you did it good and it's going to be a cross if you thought you did it bad. I wanted to actually land it closer to the uh, stick. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't. I came up a little short. And so a lot of pitch shots require oh, yeah. me going over a bunker, past the rough, trying to land it soft, and uh, <laughs> it didn't work out that way. So. And that goes back to what you said right at the start as well your distance control. You said yeah. you struggle with. Yeah. Con what about contact on that one? The contact was pretty good. It sounded pretty good. Yeah. yeah. All right. You choose any one of the shots you want a low one, a medium, a high one, and you determine if it's low, medium, or high. It's not me saying lows between zero and 15 feet. You determine from the whether flight about what your game is, yeah. Okay. And whether you want to hit it, try and hit it straight, left to right, or right to left, it's your choice. Let's say uh, one of the college players that we work with. Uh, we started off a long time ago with this. You determine the height, you determine this, and now is at the level where you know, that, that's not specific enough, it's not detailed enough, it's not good enough. So his window for low shots is 15 feet. And he'd be on a track man, and we would measure how high that went. And if it was 16 feet, then he failed it. You know, and so, and you can go as detailed and as specific as you want, but right now we're just starting off like this. What do you think? <laughs> I'm interested to see what you do here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put a... Uh because I think it actually went a little higher than I wanted it to. Oh! <laughs> Toe looks high, hands look low. The, yeah. the, there's no adjustment with how it's setting up for that type of pitch shot. And then okay. the, the yeah. distance control comes from how you practice in it. In a, in a bad... hitting 10 to 40 <laughs> yards, 10, 10 to 50 yards, and 10 to 60 yards. It's the variability now at his level that he needs to adjust. Yeah. When you do this, I want you to think aloud. Okay. So any thoughts that you're having, you're going to verbalise. So I'll give you, for example, you watch golf on TV, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you'll see Justin Rose do this. So then he might say, okay, I've got this eye closed because I want to look at the target through my dominant eye and I'm drawing a line to the target and I'm going to aim my club face there. Okay. Like we can see him on TV doing this, but we don't know what his cognition is. So I want you to verbalise your whole routine while you're hitting the shot that you just selected in the in the game. Okay. So I'm gonna do a high cut. Yeah. Uh, I'm aiming. So ultimately, I want to be here at the blue flag. So I'm gonna draw a line to the green flag as my initial target. Uh, and when I step up, I'm gonna put it a little more forward than I usually would. And I'm gonna be looking to finish a little more high instead of through it. Um, to try to get a little bit of a cut going and then I'll try to execute Ugh. and I drew over the top would, would that be something that happens a lot on the golf course or you normally that would that that's a bit of an outlier or is that something that would happen nah, it would happen sometimes but usually a cut shots a little bit stronger okay I think talking through it maybe uh a... yeah yeah because it's the first time you've done that yeah so the, the challenge point of that task was a little high. Um, it's still a, an X, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it gives me good information. So I already have a little bit in my mind okay. of how I think we can change your process on the golf course okay. to be more effective in line with what the, 
the performance data tells us, and also to maybe help you relax a little bit. You know, okay. you know, if, if you're leading the club championship going down the last, there is that those nerves. You know. Yeah, and I've had it in the last couple of years. I've been had the guy, you know, in, in semis on the road. Okay. And, okay. Uh, cool. Somehow, let it slip. So, so we can we can help. What I've learned there, we can help you develop what's called a process focus. So we can make a couple of additions that might help free you up a bit, but also might help you relax. Okay? Yeah, I definitely felt but that was good. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Integrated wireless network. Integrated wireless Super network. 170 degree wide angle lens. Yeah, yeah. 2.4 gig remote yeah. control included. Don't know what that means. Sounds Display, great. two inch LCD, storage, yeah. micro SDHC card, not yeah. included. Input, output, micro, USB, HDMI, 4K definition. Ooh. That's a sweet that GoPro. Video, 4K, <laughs> 25 frame per second, 2.7K, 30 FPS. It's, it's a must, 1080p. It's like if I was to buy... It's Tommy, waterproof up to 98 feet. Tommy Hilfiger. For when we do golf lessons It's like Tommy ocean. Hilfiger, but Tommy Brubaker. Like, it's the same thing. It's like it shopping. Doesn't it. It's like Nike. It's like choosing the Nike. shop at Gap instead of... Snap. Yeah. Or Baby no, Gap. I mean, it's not. It's really not like that. <laughs> but ultimately... I am not going to jump out of a plane. I'm going to film a golf lesson. So. so I didn't really need to spend $300. It shoots in 4K. That's all we care about. And it's got audio. Yeah, because resolution is the only thing that matters when it comes to video. As far as I'm concerned. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I have no idea. All I know is... Ian just wanted the chest strap. Yeah, I mean, it's not even turned on right now. Yeah. Like, I'm swearing. <laughs> So you said that Matthew went into stealth mode with the iPad, but the reason is that most or traditional lessons they'll go and they'll say, okay, we're going to put you on camera. Well, then what the student does is they just manipulate their golf swing to what the last lesson was. So it's in an artificial environment and it's manipulated. So Matthew went into stealth mode so that he didn't know he was being filmed. So now he has a good picture of the true mechanics rather than something that's manipulated in an artificial environment. Stealth mode. Okay, so it's that time. Oh, I got time? <laughs> yeah. All right. He loves his conversations, does he? Right, let's try to make a good stroke looking at that. We'll take a nice back and forward motion through the putt. So, um, I have an insight now into all of your processes apart from your chipping process, which we're going to get next. Okay. But if you could become really process oriented and have a strong mental game in full swing, chipping, pitching, putting, what would you select? Putting. I'm glad you said that. That's going to be the easiest one for us to do. Because your process, all the way up to just before you hit the ball, is really good. Yes. I like everything. I'd like to make so a few good. more putts because I think it, uh, you know, builds confidence in the rest of the game. Yeah, cool. And then with this, I just wanted to clarify something. You said as you walked away, you said uh, like a lot of X's or right. Okay, worse. so so good. How do you feel about that? How um, do you feel that there's X's? I don't like the X's. Okay. I wish I could execute it a little bit better. Yeah. Do you feel happy in this environment? No, I feel happy because I actually. Good gives me something to focus on versus just hitting golf awesome balls. often the way golfers practice develops a false confidence so they like to be there they like to be comfortable then they get out on the course and struggle if you practice like this and practices struggle then actually psychological habits of excellence start to emerge without you even trying to learn them it's more of an implicit thing does that make sense it does so you know, even if you went away and just did this in practice, it would help build resilience, de dealing with adversity, help build skills to transfer out there, and then wrap that club championship up easy. I think I like the fact, you know, you're talking through it makes it a little hard to execute the shot, but at yeah. least it's making me think about how I'm going about my routine awesome, for the shot. Yeah. Whether you're putting, chipping, hitting these pitch shots, or even a full swing, there's a pattern, and it's your hands and the handle of the golf club is really low. With the full swing shots, you get away with it. 
because you produce enough speed for certain things for the golf club to happen. But when you're hitting chip shot and pitch shots, you don't generate enough club speed, so then the club doesn't do certain things that it would do with a full swing, which is this. When you generate enough speed, the shaft bends right. like that. There's a lot of rotation this way, like this. And so that's gonna produce either, you know, a combination of fat shots or thin shots. Your ball striking is gonna struggle from there. So uh, if you look at a lot of good players, a lot of top players, especially uh, on the PJ Tour, European Tour, you know, that you'll find that the majority of them they're a little closer, the handle's a little higher, and that the club is set more flat on the deck. All in all, we're gonna change. We're gonna get closer, more upright, sternum ahead, that's it. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll start to see, uh, oh, hopefully, a change in, in strike. But let me show you it as well. Before we go in to do it, it'd be good for you to see it. A lot of angle. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. More. Which is most where most people practice. So rather than 20, all you're going to do is no more than two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it been been at your level, and you know what? You could go through this and think, oh, two is not enough. So crank it up, go three or four. But you, it gets to a point where it's almost, um, you could understand yourself, this is too many. This is not enough. So I can definitely see it being counterproductive if you go so many because yeah. you can figure exactly how far to hit it. Exactly. And you know what? For a complete beginner golfer, two, one shot or two shots is again counter is counterproductive because they're, they're not that good yet. They need to hit a, a, quite a number of repetitions to generate this image of what it looks like, it feels like. But for you, you're a good golfer. We should be increasing that challenge. The difficulty of the task should increase for you here because it plays benefits when you go out on the golf course. That, make, that makes sense, right? Yeah. That's it. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, just want to say thank you to Brent for allowing us to video the whole thing. I uh, hope you got something out of the, the session. Uh, thank you for everyone who watched and uh, who uh, devoted their time and energy to see what we do. Um, please make sure you like it, share it, subscribe. Uh, engage with us, give us some comments and uh, you know, give us some suggestions. What do you want to see? What was good? What was bad? Uh, what do you want to see more of? Please let us know. Um, first vlog of the new year. Happy new year to everybody and uh, we'll see you next time.